All right, so this is going to be a quick tutorial on how to install Arch Linux with the XFCE desktop using my installer script. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go ahead and get the Arch ISO. You're going to want to go ahead to archlinux.org and grab the latest ISO there. Okay, you're going to want to go ahead and create your media and you're going to want to go ahead and get booted into the ISO. And once you're booted, the first step is going to be go ahead and ping google.com. You're going to want to make sure you have an internet connection first. Okay, once you're sure you have an internet connection, you're going to want to go ahead and actually get my script. So we're going to do wget capital O for output arch dash installer dot sh. So that's going to output to a file called arch installer dot sh, and it's going to output what's at this link here, which will be in the description, and that is my actual script. So we're going to press enter. It's going to go out and fetch that script. And it's going to save it as archinstaller.sh. Okay. So the next step is going to be to actually go ahead and run the script. So if we see here, archinstaller.sh, there's my full script there. Okay, we're going to ls. So the next step is actually going to be to go ahead and make it executable. So we're going to do chmod plus x and then archinstaller.sh. Press enter. What that's going to do is it's going to make it so we can actually run the script. And then, so now that it's executable, we go ahead and type period forward slash archinstaller.sh and press enter. So now we're actually in the program interface, so we're going to select our locale first. All the others are listed here, and these are just the top ones I've put out here. So we're going to do ENUSUTF8. Next, you're going to select your time zone from a list of time zones here. I'm going to go ahead with US. You're going to select your sub zone. I'm going to go ahead with Eastern. Next, you're going to set your key map. I recommend leaving this default unless you know what you're changing it to. So we're going to leave it US and hit enter. Okay, next, you're going to select the drive you'd like to install Arch onto. So I've got three drives connected to this virtual system. Um, we're going to be installing Arch onto SDA, which is the biggest one here, 20 gigs. So you're going to go ahead and select your drive, press enter. Next it's going to ask you if you'd like to do auto or manual partitioning. Auto partitioning will erase the entire drive and install Arch to it. Manual partitioning gives you the ability to create the partition scheme yourself or if there's already an existing partition scheme, for example if you plan on dual booting you'll be able to go in here, create your partition scheme, and dual boot with another system and choose where you want to actually install Arch to. Um, I'll go over that in a later video. For this video, we're going to do auto partitioning. Okay, it's going to say, warning, will erase all data on the drive you selected. Would you like to continue? So this will erase everything. So you've actually got to check over here and do yes and press enter to continue create a swap space. We're going to go ahead and actually do this. You're going to want to do this most likely if you have less than two gigs of RAM for sure. You're going to want a swap space. So we're going to want to go ahead and select yes here. Um, the only thing to keep in mind here is to align it to G for gigabytes, so that would be five gigs, or M for megabytes, so that would be 512 megabytes, which is the default. I'm just going to leave it default here. Would you like to enable UEFI BIOS? We're going to go ahead and do no here. Would you like to use GPT partitioning? We're going to go ahead and do no here. It's going to go ahead and create the file system and mount everything for you, then ask you if you'd like to update your mirror list. We're going to go ahead and do yes to ensure we get a nice, fast, fresh mirror list. Okay, so we're just going to go through here. You're going to select your country, so we're going to go with the United States. It's going to go ahead and grab the latest mirror list and it's going to go ahead and rank those mirrors based on whichever one is fastest for you. This can take a minute depending on your connection speed. It's actually going out and it's checking every one of your mirrors for whichever one responds the fastest. Okay, once that's done, it's going to ask to begin installing the base system onto the drive you selected. So we're going to go ahead and hit yes here. It's going to go ahead and synchronize your package databases. And it's going to start downloading all the packages. And the amount of time this takes will be completely based off your internet speed. And then once 
once all the packages are downloaded, it's going to go ahead and start installing them to the drive you selected. So now Arch is actually installed to our drive, so next it's going to detect if you have a 64-bit architecture, and if you do, it's going to ask you to add the multi-lib repos to your Pac-Man config. Um, I recommend going ahead and doing this if you're prompted, so we're going to hit yes. Would you like to add Arch French repositories to your config? Um, I usually do, so we're going to go ahead and hit yes here as well. Next it's going to ask you to set your host name. I'm going to do Arch VBox. This is a virtual box install, so we're going to do our, whatever your host name is and hit enter. Next it'll ask you for a root password. You're going to want to go ahead and set something strong there. Next it's going to ask to create a new sudo user. So you're going to want to go ahead and create a user most likely, so we're going to put yes here. Go ahead and set your username and your user password. Okay, then it's going to ask to enable sudo privilege for members of Wheel. What this is going to do is it's going to give your user the ability to use the sudo command to administer your computer. So you're most likely going to want to do yes here, otherwise you're going to have to use root for any administrative tasks, which can be a pain in the ass and unsecure as well. So go ahead and do yes to this to enable sudo. Enable DHCP at boot, and this will lease you a IP from your router. Okay, enable wireless tools and WPA supplicant. Um, you're going to want to go ahead and do yes to this if you have Wi-Fi, so you can actually connect to the wireless after you booted. Um, I'm not using Wi-Fi here, so I'm going to do no. Install the Grand Unified Bootloader on to Dev SDA, which is the drive we selected. This will actually make the drive bootable. So if you select no here, you're not even going to be able to boot into your operating system. So you're going to want to go ahead and do yes here. Install OS Prober. This, this is going to make it so Grub can detect a Windows or a Mac OS X system and make it so you can dual boot with them. So if you plan on dual booting with Windows or Mac, you're going to want to select yes. Dual booting with Linux isn't a problem, but if you dual boot with Windows or Mac, select yes here. We're going to do no because I'm not doing that. Okay, it's going to go ahead and install Grub to the drive and it's going to make the configuration. Okay, and then it's going to ask if you'd like to install Xorg Server, which will actually give you a graphical environment. So if you plan on having a desktop, you're going to want to select yes. If you select no here, you're going to be booted into a server environment only, so it's going to be command line only. So if you want a desktop, we're going to select yes here. It's going to go ahead and synchronize your package databases. And it's going to go ahead and start installing Xorg for you. Okay, then it's going to ask you if you'd like to install graphics drivers for NVIDIA, AMD, or Intel, and also for VirtualBox guests. So if you have any of those graphics cards, or if you're running a VirtualBox guest system, so if you're installing Arch Linux in VirtualBox, you're going to want to select yes here. Okay, then you're going to select your GPU, so if you have any of these, you're going to want to select them. Um, we're actually doing a VirtualBox guest install here, so I'm going to do VirtualBox guest. Then it's going to ask you if you'd like to install the guest editions. I'm going to go ahead and do. You're going to want this if you plan on using a desktop. And then it's going to ask you if you'd like to install a desktop environment or window manager. We're going to go with yes. Um, I've got a small list at the moment, but I plan on adding some more here. I've got XFCE, Cinnamon, Gnome, KDE, Awesome, DWM, and i3 window manager. Um, I'm going to go with XFCE because it's my favorite. It's going to ask, would you like to install XFCE goodies? We're going to go with yes. So it's going to go ahead and download all the packages for XFCE. It's going to go ahead. 
ahead and install it. And it's going to say XFCE installed successfully on start. Use the command start X. So when you boot up, you're going to log in. You're going to be in the command line and you're just going to type start X and it's going to go ahead and boot into the desktop for you. Uh, okay. Would you like to install some common software? We're going to go ahead and do this. It's going to give you a small list, which I plan on adding more to soon, of software. Um, to check and uncheck things is just spacebar. So we'll go ahead and get OpenSSH, Vim, ZSH, Tmux, HTOP, ScreenFetch, UFW. Okay, and then you, when you're done, you press Enter to continue. It's going to go ahead and grab any of that software you selected install it for you. And it's going to say install process complete, reboot now. Normally you just hit yes, remove the installation media, and it'll boot right into your new Arch system. We're just going to hit no here. Is so that system fully installed? Would you like to unmount? Yes. Okay, so as you can see, 9 minutes and 33 seconds for a full Arch Linux install with a desktop environment. Okay, so we'll go ahead and exit this SSH session here with my virtual box. Okay, and here's the actual virtual box that I've been controlling this whole time. So if we see here, here we are root at Arch ISO. Okay, we're going to go ahead and remove the virtual disk from the drive. So as you can see, I've got the Arch Linux ISO in the virtual drive here. So we're going to remove that. Force on mount, that's fine. Okay, and then we'll just go ahead here and reset the machine. Okay, so as we can see here, we've got our fresh Arch Linux install, so we'll go ahead and boot right into this from our grub menu here. Okay, it boots right up nice and quick. Log in as the user and the password I set. And there you have it, this is a full Arch install right here. Okay, perfect. So now if we go ahead and do Start X. Gonna go ahead and boot up XFCE for us, and there we have it—a fresh XFCE installed, Arch Linux. Simple as it gets. Hope you guys enjoyed, and thanks for watching.